Houston, we have a problem. Oh my goodness. I think your mom dropped you when you were a baby. Your skills are complete. You've waited all day for it, and it's here. Over the next few minutes, we're going to take you through many of the steps in our Bay Area Rebuild Project. This project is huge in scope and involves hundreds of employees and contractors. The end results will be a highly advanced, state-of-the-art system, providing our customers with services not imagined just a few years ago. The first step is the walkout. In this process, we visit each utility pole and underground vault pedestal location to verify the existing or as-built AT&T broadband plant. We need to determine the condition of attachments, ownership of the poles, and sources of power for the new systems. Also considered is the distances between these poles and vault pedestals and sizes and types of coaxial cables. Among other considerations is the size of service to residential, multi-unit dwellings, commercial complexes, and schools. All of this information is vital for the design and drafting groups to do the proper calculations to build the new facility. Design and drafters need this information to plan a radio frequency network as well as a high-speed data and telephony network that ensures all of the devices attached to it send and receive proper signals. All designs require efficient and cost-effective use of the equipment needed such as amplifiers, line extenders, taps, splitters, and all of the other items needed to effectively deliver our signals to customers. All designs must be properly documented for reference for future upgrades or maintenance. Permitting is another very important step in the rebuild process. A number of permits may be required for any particular project. General permits for trenching work are required before we do any trenching work on city streets. Before we can get a permit, we do field walkouts and drafters prepare a clear and concise map so cities know where we will be working and what work will be done. We also need power supply permits. Each location is surveyed to make sure PG&E has available power to hook up to. With the current lead time from PG&E, this type of permit needs to be filed for 10 months in advance to meet our build deadlines. These are just a few of the permits we need. There are others and they are all necessary for the successful completion of our project. Pole engineering is another crucial step. All poles where cable and fiber is to be installed must be engineered for safety. The pole is analyzed and the result of this assessment dictates what work must be done prior to installing cable. The hub construction is started to support the advanced services that will be launched to our customers once the upgrade rebuild for an area is complete. The hub size varies depending on the number of homes that are served from that facility and can range from 50 square feet to 8,000 square feet in size. We use two methods for placing our fiber and coax cables in the air, on poles, or in the ground through conduit. Our cable is usually anywhere from half an inch to an inch in diameter. In the aerial process, our contract crews use large bucket trucks and trailers that carry the cable reels. The underground process can be more complicated. If the area where we want to place the cable does not already have conduit in place or the conduit is damaged, we may have to trench streets or sidewalks to place new conduit and vault pedestals that house our electronics. Splicing will be necessary and this process has the biggest impact on our customers in an upgrade less so in a rebuild. Multiple one-person teams move through an area cutting out the old electronics from poles or vault pedestals and replace them with our new electronics. Fibers are being spliced together throughout the network 
to provide new channels, high-speed internet, and telephone services out to our customers. The size of a single fiber is comparable to a strand of hair, but the amount of information that flows through is amazing. As you can see, the fusing together of a fiber is a complicated process, but the results are worth it. Finally comes certification. There are many specific technical requirements which are essential for delivering telephony, high-speed data access, and digital TV services over our hybrid fiber coax network. Once the hub is complete and the outside plant spliced, it is time to launch these great products out to our customers. The signals are processed from the equipment housed at this facility and flow through the fiber and coax cables and into the customer's home. Well, there you have it. A quick look at our massive rebuild project. It sounds like a lot of work to get it all together, and it is. America's thirst for quality entertainment has been the driving force behind the cable industry's growth. The willingness to invest in new technologies and programming has made cable television more than an antenna service. It is now an integral part of American culture. And once again, one connection changes everything. Yeah, baby! <laughs>